In 1982, American toy company Hasbro acquired the license for a series of Japanese toys from the company Takara Tomy, called Microman. The Microman toys were tiny cyborgs that were billed as being the actual dimensions of the characters they represented. The technology for the development of these toys was instrumental in the creation of the successful G.I. Joe toys from Hasbro. Then, hoping to capture lightning twice, Hasbro, in 1984, acquired the rights to another toy line from Takara Tomy called Diaclone, which were robots capable of transforming into vehicles and weapons. Using both the Diaclone and the Microman action figures, Hasbro developed the first series of Transformers toys, employing artists and writers from Marvel Comics to flesh out their backstories. None of them could have possibly predicted the money-making machine that they had created. Today, there have been 21 separate animated series based on the Transformers, as well as countless lines of countless toys, endless merchandise from beach towels to ashtrays to sunglasses to seat covers to lunch boxes to... You know what? The only thing we couldn't find them selling are Transformers dildos. We did find some Transformers butt plugs, though. Just kidding. Maybe. And of course, we haven't even gotten into the movies yet. The film series alone is worth $10.3 billion as of June 2014, including $7 billion in merchandising. The combined production budget of the first four films was $1.1 billion, and the combined global box office is nearly $3.8 billion, which probably went a long way to contributing to Michael Bay's $430 million net worth. The piece of shit. Despite some declines in film grosses in the U.S. market, the films have continued to make more and more money overseas to the point where both Transformers 3 and 4 have grossed $1.1 billion apiece. You have no idea how painful this fact is to both of us. But we're here today to talk about Transformers 4, or Transformers Age of Extinction, directed once again by Michael Bay and written by Aaron Kruger, whose resume is almost entirely cinematic aids. Other than changing the lead protagonist from Shia LaBeouf to Mark Wahlberg, not much has changed for the series in this installment. According to the critic aggregator Rotten Tomatoes, the film received an 18% positive reaction from critics, and it won two Razzie Awards for Worst Director in Michael Bay and Worst Supporting Actor in Kelsey Grammer. Despite the generally sour reception from critics, however, the film garnered a cinema score of A- from moviegoers, which left us wondering, what would this audience give an F? Casablanca? Citizen Kane? Probably something like that. Transformers! More than meets the eye! So guys, in all the uh, previous installments of TJ and Paul Versus, we've relied on this substance right here to guide us through the... Uh, mountain of shit that we just are forcing ourselves to eat our way through over and over again as we make this horrible, ill-conceived, terrible fucking show that we do here that essentially involves us torturing ourselves for days at a fucking time to get three ninety nine dollars out of your ass <laughs> so that we could fucking have some sort of a voice of aversion to real work out there in the world. Whatever. I don't know. We gotta fucking... But every day that we do this, we gotta eat our way through the shit Sunday, and usually our way of getting the munchies up enough to eat the shit Sunday is by smoking marijuana, but this time- It hasn't been working yeah, well, it, though. Yeah, it failed for us. We're our record is not three great. Three and one. Three losses, one one win, or one and three. I don't know how that goes. One win, three losses. That's where we're at. So we I beat thought, Ghostbusters. Yeah. We lost against Suicide Squad. Yeah. We they get the same credit if Marco Robbie dropped, dropped, dropped a frog out of her ass. <laughs> At this point, wouldn't it be better? It would. It just do it. It would. It would. I have a fucking. I've seen Marco Robbie's ass give birth to a frog. <laughs> we lost against uh, Star Wars Holiday Special. Yep. Oh, what is this? <laughs> Okay, I committed to do this. I got to do it. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> okay, we can do this. <clears throat> Look at me. This is the face of a broken man. <laughs> this is the face of a broken 
fucking man. We lost against Pokemon the first movie. <laughs> <laughs> We're tired of fucking losing. We didn't want that. So I was trying to think out of the box, and I thought, what better way to to get dumb enough to enjoy a stupid fucking spectacle action flick than to just get wasted? Tonight, alcohol is the thing, though. I'm already too deep on r big rum and cokes. We've got all kinds of drink around here. I'm already toasty going in, and I'll tell you, it has helped a little bit dampen the dread that I feel for this film. I'm kidding, it has dampened anything. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, um, the first Transformers movie. I didn't care for it, but I didn't think it was awful. The second one I thought was twice as bad as the first one. The third one I thought was twice as bad as the second one. This is the fourth one. And this is the fourth one. Is it going to be twice as bad as the third one? Because we're having compound shittiness at this point. I'll tell you what, if this is twice as bad as Transformers 3, then I'm fucking doomed. You're going to see me kill myself here tonight. <laughs> no, no. You're going to see me open up these fucking wrists. <sighs> Wait, he's getting drunk. So we got shitty drunk. Uh, I got to the point uh, where I was just slurring my, my DJ. Why is Mark Wahlberg here? I got that bad, and uh, TJ didn't quite get there, but he drank a lot too. And I can say for my part, didn't work. Yeah, even as dumb as we both were, I probably drank away at least 30 IQ points, <laughs> and I still was not nearly dumb enough to enjoy this travesty. It's horrible. Uh, but uh, yeah, the drinking idea, I think it ended up actually working against us. Yes, it did. Um, so... Whatever, didn't help with this one. Um, Not at all. That's pretty much it. <laughs> we tried, we, we failed. Yep, yeah. we drank. Boo, we came, we drank, we died. The Transformers, more than meets the eye. All right, so Paul and I are both going to read this convoluted synopsis of this film to see who can get through this shit sandwich a little faster. Paul, uh, cue me when, uh, when you're ready. All right. In three, two, one, go. 65 million years ago, an alien race known as the Creators used devices called seeds to terraform planet Earth, covering it with an alloy called transformium. In the present day, geologist Dar Darcy Turrell excavates the transformium for KSI Industries, which uses it to build Transformers drones. Five years after the Battle of Chicago, the people have started to view the Transformers as public enemies, though the public believes that the Autobots were granted sanctuary. They are, in fact, hunted down by rogue CIA Black Ops Division Cemetery Wind, led by opportunistic government official Harold Attinger, who believes that all Transformers should be exterminated regardless of their faction. They are aided by Locke down, a Cybertronian bounty hunter working for the creators, promising to give Adinger a seed if his division manages to capture Optimus Prime. Lockdown loses track of Optimus in Mexico City, instead killing Ratchet, where he refuses to give up his leader's whereabouts. Optimus, damaged in Mexico City and disguised as a rundown semi-truck, is discovered by Cade Yeager, a financially struggling Texan inventor. While his teenage daughter Tessa and business partner Lucas Flannery en encourage him to turn Optimus over to the authorities, Cade instead fixes Optimus, hoping to understand his technology. Lucas calls Cemetery Wind to attack the Jaeger farm, but Optimus and Tessa's secret boyfriend, our Irish rally car driver Shane Dyson, come to the family's aid. During the pursuit, Lucas is killed by one of Lockdown's grenades. Optimus summons the uh, surviving Autobots, Bumblebee, Hound, Drift, and Crosshairs, who have come to distrust humans. Using a stolen CIA drone, Cade discovers KSI's involvement in the attacks on the Autobots. Infiltrating KSI's headquarters in Chicago, Cade discovers the murdered Autobots are being melted down to make uh, the Transformer drones. Joshua Joyce, the ambitious company CEO, is in league with Adinger to revolutionize global defense and improve human society using the seed. He also has captured Brains and Megatron's head. Uh, wait a minute, he's also used the captured Brains what? And Megatron's head to create prototype Transformer soldiers Galvatron and Stinger. Despite Joshua wanting Galvatron to look more like Optimus Prime, the finished Galvatron resembles Megatron. How did that happen? The Autobots storm the building and destroy the laboratory. But they soon leave Joshua. Wait, they soon leave after Joshua announces that they are no longer required. 
added your forces, Joshua, to deploy the destructive Galvatron to capture Autobot terrorists. During the battle, Galvatron's behavior becomes slightly erratic when it starts destroying vehicles, and the people in them, by the way. But Joshua manages to redirect it to target the Autobots as Galvatron battles Optimus. It gets autonomously freed from control, surprising Joshua. Suddenly, Lockdown arrives and soon abducts both Optimus and Tessa, leaving Cade and Shane devastated. While Lockdown's large prison spacecraft hovers over Chicago to hand over the seed, Cade, Shane, and the Autobots sneak on board to discover Optimus and Tessa. They hijack a smaller ship containing a number of other Autobots called Dinobots. Uh, just before lockdown leaves Earth, the Autobots reveal to Cade that Galvatron is in fact Megatron reincarnated, plotting to use the Seed and the Transformer drones to conquer the world, starting with Hong Kong. As KSI plans to use the Seed in the remote Mongolian desert to create a vast amount of unusable, a vast amount of usable Transformium. Cade informs Joshua, causing him to have a change of heart and agrees to hand over the seed with help from Darcy and his Chinese business associate, Su Yu Ming. Galvatron reactivates himself and soon activates the KSI drones and a battle follows in Hong Kong streets between the Autobots, Cemetery Wind, and the drones. During that fight, Optimus wins the alliance of the Dinobots. So during, <laughs> never mind. Lockdown returns to capture Optimus and the Dinobots using a large magnet to cause destruction. After disabling the magnet, Optimus fights Lockdown in an abandoned factory. In the ensuing duel, Optimus kills Adinger, but allowing Lockdown to pin Optimus down with his own sword. Cade ends up uh, fighting Lockdown one-on-one -on -one while Tessa and Shane free Optimus, who destroys Lockdown. Galvatron retreats, vowing that he will return. Optimus asks the Autobots to protect the Jaegers before flying away to space with the seed, sending a message to his creators that he is coming for them. How long did it take me to read it? Five minutes and 21 <sighs> seconds. 3.36. Woo! You win. 3.36. Suck on my dick. Oh, yeah. Oh, <coughs> what a convoluted piece of shit movie, everybody. Oh. The Transformers, more than meets the eye. So probably the first thing we need to talk about in this movie is uh, the characters. You know, we didn't really have a chance to talk much about the characters in our last review. That is usually a segment we do here on this show. Uh, we did it with Suicide Squad. We planned on doing it with Pokemon, the first movie. We really couldn't do it because there was no characters in that fucking movie. This movie is the opposite. Yeah. There's too many fucking characters. Way too many. Way too many. And they're just, honestly, they're honestly just as paper thin as the Pokemon ones. But in this case, we just can't really avoid talking about them. Because we need to talk about the things they do... And the strange, I mean, like, you, just, just listen, okay? We're going to go through the human heroes first. Yeah. So, uh, the we, we protagonist called, of the movie, Mark yeah. Wahlberg. Yeah, we you called him. Take it on Mark Wahlberg. We called buddy. him Mark Wahlberg. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's Mark Wahlberg. What? No. Just like in every movie, he's Mark Wahlberg. He's very one-note Wahlberg, just kind of like... Always on that verge of anxiety, always ready to go at any moment. That's him in this movie. He's just that way from start to finish. That's totally... Well, did you see Mark Wahlberg's face there? Hold up. I, I, I hate to go back again, but... Whatever. Goddamn. This is... I think we all died and this is hell anyway, so just go Hold back. on. There's a bridge. I'm gonna freeze it on Mark Wahlberg's face this time so you can see how bad his acting truly is. Not there, but soon. Mark Wahlberg. He's a he's a failed inventor, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, 
What, what's his name again, TJ? Cade Jaeger. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking yogurt or something. I don't know, a man. A beer. Cade <laughs> Jaeger. Jaeger is a fucking drink. Oh, yeah, drink. it's a drink. That's a yeah. drink. Yeah, Jaegermeister. Jaegermeister. I don't know if they were trying to go for that. Maybe we should have drank some Jaegermeister instead of some rum. Maybe that would have helped yeah. more. Maybe the dude that was writing this script was drunk on Jaegermeister <laughs> while he wrote this fucking role. Uh, his name was <laughs> Cade Jaeger. Oh, yeah. yeah he, they try to do this shitty failed inventor. Tr you know, like, I think they were going for the eccentric mad scientist kind of feel. Like, they were going for a Doc Brown kind of feel. gigawatts! But the problem with that is... Imagine Mark Wahlberg as Doc Brown for a second. <laughs> Talking to a plastic plant. Still doing it. <laughs> Just and I think you immediately see the fucking issue with this fucking casting choice. You can't make Wahlberg a smart guy. He His just inventions can't. are a shit. And by the way, Paul got so incensed by the shittiness of his fucking invention. His robots suck. Yeah. What? Yeah. Fuck you! <laughs> Who would want that? <laughs> There's also a beer bot that's supposed to get get you your bud your ice cold Budweiser. Won't bring you a beer. But it won't bring you the fucking beer. Come on, bring Daddy the alcohol. Come on. So this guy fails at robots. How many times are you gonna fall? He this sucks scam? at robots. He sucks at robots. Nobody's ever told this man that he sucks at robots. Let's see how many robots you built, Paul. Let's see, you're fucking a robot. Like, let's just replace any other thing. Like, it would be like if he was like running a diner, but everything was burnt. <laughs> the whole reason that this robotics angle is even in the movie is so he could fix Optimus Prime and shit. So we're supposed to believe this fucker can fix Transformers, but. He can't build a decent robot dog or a decent beer grabbing robot. Bullshit! Makes no sense. In addition to sucking at his job, he's just an asshole and a Total creepy one. Creepy asshole. Uh, he's got this obsession with his daughter's pussy. Yep. Like his daughter's vagina is the holy grail. If Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. <laughs> to Mark Wahlberg, and it's just slapped in the face. You're, you're just hit in the face with it 15 the fucking times. His daughter's pussy. Yeah, his daughter's pussy just slaps you in the face because he just brings it up constantly. No. no this is a non-dating household, okay? You don't date, I don't date. That's it. Non-dating household? Go no. fuck yourself, Mark Wahlberg. You don't get to put a fucking chastity belt on her pussy, you fucking caveman. She's about to graduate high school. You're not allowed to date. I don't date, you don't date. But then he wants to take her to the dance. Hey, I had to buy her a prom dress. You want me to deny her a prom dress? Might as well, you denied her a prom date. No, I offered to take her and chaperone. Nobody wants to go to the dance with their dad. It's weird. It's not the issue. That is weird. I agree with that. No, that is the issue. You know what the engine on this for? I can break it down. Shit, that is. Okay? Now, what is she, 23? I think she looks hot. What did you say? Like a hot teenager. Oh, it's the teenager thing that makes it better. Thank you. I didn't say, it didn't sound like what it meant. <laughs> what? I don't know what I'm. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. To be funny. What's the joke, though? Dad, please. You can't keep spending money on junk just. The joke is Michael Bay sitting there no, rolling no, around in a pile of money like Scrooge I'm McDuck. Just, <laughs> Suckers. If this was in some fucking avant-garde art film or something, I mean, maybe you I mean, have this weird Ivanka and Donald thing going on. But if it was just a thrown away fucking comment, we wouldn't even bring it up. If it was just it, some no, little it's, joke, it's just all the whoa, time through whoa, this movie. Whoa, it's a fucking I don't want you fucking. I don't want you fucking. I don't want you fucking. She's 17, by the way, his daughter. And we, I guess we can move on. Uh, 17 going on 23. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Seventeen going on twenty-three is right. It, it's not. It's not in the least bit uh, believable that this is an actual seventeen-year-old. So, uh, another thing that makes Walt, Mark Wahlberg an asshole: um, he steals power from his neighbors because he's broke. As an advance on your regular paycheck. What regular paycheck? Which you will get back. When? Never. We're broke. I knew it. Six months late on payments, Mr. Yeager, and I see you stealing power at the poll. Hey, that's not your concern. 
So we're stealing power now? No, we're borrowing it from the neighbors. Great. That's awesome. But, I mean, like, uh, maybe that's in the realm of understandable. You know, he's got a house to... He's got a daughter to take care of and stuff. You he's know, run his little tools to desperate make money. Desperate times call for desperate measures. That's still a dick move, but... He just wastes it, though. But he doesn't... It's not like he's being at all courteous and trying to be like, well, I'll keep my power consumption to a minimum. Why does this dude that's broke that sucks at robots have a nicer piece of property than I've ever lived on? Yeah, he's movie broke. Specifically, he's Michael Look at Bay this movie giant movie. workspace he has with neon shit in it. Yeah. Well, that's he's wasting all his money on these fucking robots. Yeah. How, you know how many robots. dollars a stealing power? Yeah. You know how many dollars a month Wait a it costs? That's true. He's stealing power from his neighbor to run a fucking neon sign in his <laughs> shitty workshop. <laughs> what a prick. So wait a minute, this guy, first of all, he won't allow his daughter to date. Yeah, this is At a no dating house. He's stealing power from his neighbor to run superfluous neon signs and build shitty robots. <laughs> and we're supposed to fucking like this prick? If we're supposed to like him, could you have cast someone more likable than Mark fucking goddamn Wahlberg? What? No. Some people come by to look at his house because the bank, I guess, is trying to sell it or whatever. Um, you know, they're just people out there to look at the house. They're not his fucking enemy, but he chases them away with a baseball bat. He's like, rearrange your fucking face! Sir, do you want to see the property? Sure. I'd be more than happy to give you a tour. I'll show you three other buyers I got buried up back then. I'll crack your head open like an egg. Stand back, back. I told you don't come back here anymore. I will have my brother come back and beat your ass. Don't you start with me. They're just here to see the house. They didn't know about this existing tension. Leave them out of it. You and know? that's your hero. That's the likability level of your hero. A shitty inventor, obsessed with his daughter in a creepy way. Stealing thief, power from his neighbors. And violent for no reason. Just needlessly violent towards other people. And, oh, yeah. And by the way, the idea of uh, being a, a robotics guy who's going to make the be next big invention. The place you do that is in Silicon Valley. It's not in rural bumfuck Texas. Yeah. He literally lives in a rural bumfuck Texas town where there everything is run down and there's clo closing signs everywhere and it's d in desperate, dire economic stra uh, straits. And yet there's LA supermodels yeah. just walking the streets. Predictably. Dude, rude. Look at these two June bugs. Woo. Mama. Hey, you're paying Yeah, you see bitches like that in small town shithole America yeah. all the time. Oh my god. Yeah, because you know, most small fucking shithole towns in the middle of nowhere just have hot bitches just oh, strutting yeah. the streets, man. But uh yeah, so his daughter, we call her fail bait. Yeah. Didn't we already have a driving scene? Time for another one, TJ. <laughs> Two more weeks, girls. No more classes ever. Almost time to get a tan and get wasted. Woo! I agree. Yeah, let's get wasted. I don't know about the tan, but. Oh. <laughs> neighbors drop repairs, whatever. What? You drop the, the neighbors gotta repair the. They get their stuff, they drop it there, and the dude repairs it, I guess. And that's his business. So this hot chick repairs robots for a living? I think her dad does. Oh. Mark Wahlberg, dude. Okay, Maybe right. she does too. I oh, this know. is Mark Wahlberg's chick? And this is daughter, dude. Oh, his daughter. The reason I call her fail bait is because um, it's just... Her, the, the defining character trait of this bitch, aside from just blandness and damsel in distress shit, is just... She's 17. Yeah. 12 to 17 is the official teenage danger window. It's my job to get you through it, so you can be pissed off all you want. That's the most important thing about her is that she's 17. She's just dragged around in this movie, too. Oh, yeah. Every, like, th there's no point in bringing her. All right, sweetie, you need to keep moving here, okay? Come on! I'm freaking out. You need to move now! I'm not moving! I'm going back to the ship! 
I don't know why useless. Wahlberg brings her. Like, why doesn't he just send her to a hotel somewhere? Because she's constantly in peril everywhere they go, constantly in need of rec rescuing uh, by one of the other cast members. It just makes no sense that she's in this movie. Uh, he's also got a fucking uh, assistant. Business partner. Yeah. Oh, is, is, is that what he calls him? A business no, partner? No, he's a, he's a partner. He's his Fuck business me. fucking partner. Okay, so this dude is a business partner of his. Uh, Surf guy. Who the fuck knows why or how this guy is contributing to Mark Wahlberg's failed robotics empire. But he keeps around this stupid fucking dunce. Surfer. B stereotypical, like, whoa, sorry I'm late, Cade Yeager. The fucking waves blew out, bro, and I was low, low on gas. It's just horrible. He's just this horrible fucking stereotype of a burnout surfer dude. Um... He gets hit in the face with a football at one point. That's his big comedic relief, I yeah, guess. I mean hey, Kent. Football. <laughs> oh, that looks real. <laughs> this film has some amazing slapstick. <laughs> what a pratfall. <laughs> so his name is TJ Miller. The actor who plays him is named T.J. Miller, uh, which makes me sad to be fucking named T.J. Yeah. Now, maybe the guy is a talented actor, maybe he's funny, I don't know. In this movie, he's dog shit. The Michael Bay effect has just dug its claws in him and <laughs> sucked out all the fucking charisma, left him an empty shell he's of a, a giant, fucking performance. He's a giant pussy in this movie. Total pussy. Totally total scared. Pussy. And like, how, how weird is it that a surfer dude is the dude that's always bringing up to call the cops? Yeah. Like, aren't those supposed to be, like, stoners? Like, man, fuck the police, man. That's like a surfer dude, right? No, this surfer dude loves the police. He wants no, to call them for everything. That's not a truck, okay? You're right. It's an alien killing machine. Dude, Jesus. It's DOA. It's been recalled. Total done. So listen, there's a number that you call. You're supposed to call the government. It's the American thing to do. Surfer guy dies real early on in this movie. Thankfully. Thankfully he dies... He dies uh, due to his own betrayal of his friends. Oh, yeah, that's right. Which uh, we should probably talk about his whole betrayal thing, too. Yeah. Um, who betrays their friends and then, like, to the tune of knowing that government agents are going to show up with guns? Maybe primarily my fault, okay? They said they were going to bring a check. I didn't know they were going to set a death squad. <laughs> what a line. That's why you don't contact the fucking government, you idiot. <laughs> And then goes where his friends are to be there when the government agents get there? Yeah. If you narc on your fucking friends, you don't put yourself in the crosshairs of what you know is going to be the raid. Yeah. You go, You keep your head down. You've It'd done like, your duty. You've ratted out your friends. Like, yeah. I mean, like, if, 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 if I fucking call the police and say, yeah, man, my friend over there, he's selling crack from his house, man. You don't then go over to his house to buy some crack. <laughs> this guy doesn't uh, know that, though, apparently. He, he just... rats his friends out and then shows up. And then gets killed for it. And then when the in, in the ensuing chase, he's blown up by a grenade in a scene that passes so fucking fast, you'd have missed it if you blinked. Yeah, we were we arguing should... about some fucking uh, Red, Red Bull, Bull stuff. product placement, yeah, we and saw he died. A Red Bull product placement, and we're like, fuck you, Red Bull. And while we were on our fuck Red Bull rant, this guy died, and it was just nothing. And he's never mentioned again. I think Optimus <laughs> Prime at one point says condolences about your friend. And they're yeah. Like, oh, okay. They're like, oh, don't worry about it. Nah, just, he's, he sucked anyway. Just don't a worry piece about of shit. It. And then he's gone, and he's he's never mentioned. There's no sort of like this one's for you, <laughs> surf guy. No, <laughs> no. he's just done. He's like he's dead. Move on. <laughs> Got blowed up. Uh, oh God, guys. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, it was a Red Bull car. Okay. Oh, Red Bull. Crazy. I'm never drinking another Red Bull again. Yeah, I'm Go switching ahead. to Monster. We're, we're Monster fans. Monster. Now. Monster for life, bro. Monster energy drink is the better energy drink. You have a Red Bull right there. No, I don't. That's a monster. Pour this. Pour this out. You can't. <laughs> There's no way. I don't know, man. <laughs> Fuck you, Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking lie. Tastes like shampoo, anyway. I'm done with you, Red Bull. You're done. You're done, Red Bull. Uh, uh, so then uh, there's Failbait's uh, boyfriend. We call him Irish Driver Guy. Yeah. No, you don't. I'm her boyfriend. You're my boyfriend. What? You're not her boyfriend. His name's Shane and he drives, Dad. His 
name Shane Why and Tribes? What do you give a shit if I'm. Is that really the fucking most pressing concern right now, you dipshit? I'm sorry. I'm not gonna. Like, I don't care. Even if I'm the most fucking stodgy father ever, like. No one's sticking their dick in you, you little bitch. But he drives, Dad. But like, if, when I'm being chased by the government, my house just blew up. <laughs> All this shit's going on. That's my least fucking goddamn concern. Oh, he That's drives. How quirky he is. Yeah. His he's contribution. Irish and he's a driver. Yeah, guy. He, he's a driver guy. He's also in his twenties and fucking fail bait, which we are weirdly reminded of in. Probably the strangest scene in this movie. Uh, Marky Mark confronts him. He's like, hey, you, you, you in your 20s and she's 17. I'm going to fuck you up, man. And he does the most inexplicable fucking thing. Look, I race rally cars. One driver, one now. I'm a race car, man. Look, I race rally cars. Yeah, hey, man. I'm a racing man. Let me tell you my whole life story here at the Robot Apocalypse. Because that's what's really important right now is this bullshit, boring family dynamic. I just can't let somebody into my daughter's pussy. I'm sorry. I know the robots are fucking invading. Oh, here's some hope. This is the famous part, I think. One, I punch you right in the mouth and you call the police on me. Or two... Call the cops on you because this is illegal. She's a minor. You're on the run from the government. You don't, you can't call the. He was a senior. It's fine. No, it's not fine. We've got a pre existing juvenile foundation relationship. Statute 2705 3. What? Texas statute? Is that a real law? What a weird fucking plot line. Dude, he checked. Dude, he, Dude, he, Dude, he literally has a copy of the law in his wallet. This is why it's okay for me to bang this 17-year-old. No, no, it's all, it's all right, officer. I can, I can okay, bang this 17-year-old. Okay, excuse me, officer. I got this. This explains the law. It's okay that I'm in that pussy, because guess what? Romeo and Juliet laws, y'all. Romeo and Juliet laws. I could be up in that 17-year-old pussy. It's legal for me, because we have an existing... Juvenile relationship. Yep. Here's the Romeo and Juliet law all spelled out for you. So you see, I actually have a license to fuck your 17-year-old uh, daughter's sweet little pussy, Mark Wahlberg. And this is Mark Wahlberg's worst nightmare, because remember, that's the, 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 his mission in life <laughs> is to keep every dick in the universe away from that pussy at all costs. And he thinks the law is on his side, but then this guy, boom, bitch, Breaks out the fucking license to fuck 17-year-old's <laughs> card, which he's laminated and keeps in his wallet at all times. It makes no sense. It also completely... This is another good guy, by the way. Mark, wh why are all of Michael Bay's good guys total fucking creeps? <laughs> yeah. His good guys are a guy who is obsessed day and night with his daughter's pussy and what it's doing. And another guy who's also obsessed with his daughter's pussy, but desperately wants in it. It's just like this, it's almost like a cartoon level interplay. I don't want no one fucking this here pussy. I want to fuck that there pussy. I got a license to fuck that pussy. Well, I got these, bitch. You stole mouthwash? I like to be fresh when I'm making out with your daughter. That's funny. <laughs> The villains uh, in this movie are worse. Uh, we had far less to say about the villains because they're just generic and boring. Uh, the first one, I guess, is Frazier, Kelsey Grammer. Um, he plays some CIA agent who's obsessed with exterminating the Transformers. Yeah, just an inexplicable xenophobe against this alien race. It's never really explained why. I mean, at this point in the film's chronological order, the fucking Autobots have saved yeah, the whole fucking planet. There's no like, backstory like Optimus Prime s stepped on my daughter's head <laughs> in the Battle of Chicago, and that's why I hate all robot. It doesn't make sense. There's I just hate the aliens. He's just like, aliens are bad, I don't like them. He's absolutely wasted as an actor on this role, too. No! Not generic Autobot I've never seen before! <laughs> no! <laughs> I must say, it is remarkable, really astounding, the success that the CIA has had. 
It's remarkable and astounding that these movies continue to be made, you mean. Is that Lieutenant Dangle? It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Dangle's in this movie. That's cool. I, don't, I must not have seen whatever that's a reference to. Reno 911? Oh, no, I never watched that. Oh, come on, TJ. Come on, TJ? Jesus. Can we do TJ and Paul versus Reno 911 instead of this? <laughs> Please? You wish. It's actually funny. This is funny, too. Kelsey, there's Frazier right there. Guarantee his next line is going to be a laugh riot. Check it out. Take the floor, Frazier. How that's going? Outstanding. Woo! Yes! Yeah! Frazier! Kelsey Grammer in rare form in this film. Who the fuck is Kelsey Grammer? Um... We have the uh, the evil Jew. Evil Jew. Yeah, he's a bald evil Jew. He runs some kind of tech company called what was it again? KSI. I don't know. They make this uh, stuff using transformium, which is the shit I guess the transformers, transformers are made, made of. out of. And you know, here's a here's a weird moment about that too. Uh, first of all, transformium is the dumbest fucking name ever. <laughs> yeah, really, uh, unobtainium was that was also only dumb. only slightly but worse. Marginally, I would say I would say transformium is worse than unobtainium. All right, I I, I go the other direction. I all think right, unobtainium but whatever. Is horrible. They're they're close in horribleness. Yes. You have to agree on that yes. at least. But uh, transformium definitely up there with unobtainium as a ridiculous <laughs> fake metal. But here's the thing: this is what the transformers are made of. And one of the conceits of this movie is K the KSI guy, the evil Jew, he's looking at the fucking Transformers. He's like, you know, before we realized this is what Transformers were made of, this had no industrial application. <laughs> what? It had no industrial application prior to that? This indestructible metal that we've seen <laughs> in multiple films just take bullets and missiles like they ain't shit. Never had any industrial use prior to that. It's silly. Uh, and he's figured out some way to make it turn into a bunch of little pixels. Yeah. And ch change from one thing into another, I guess. Yeah, he turns a Beats pill at one point into a gun. Uh, I wish I could tell you that it looks cool, but it doesn't. It looks like a really bad special effect. Some of the Transformers in this movie now transform like that. So you, you fans of the Transformers that like when the robots turn into a car will be... Excited to hear they don't do that anymore. God, that was awful. What are these things? Paul's out. Paul's leaving, dude. We need a full I can't. Now possible civilian casualties. There's a liquid one. You're making history. Yep. That's a superpower. Well, why did that look worse than anything I've ever seen? Yeah, now they just turn to a bunch of fucking squares. <laughs> they are a bunch of they fucking are a squares. Bunch of fucking squares, you're right. Uh, 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 evil, evil Jew, Jew yeah. yeah he's, he's... By the way, he's in collusion with Frazier, who is the uh, rogue CIA operative in charge of a program called Cemetery Wind, which sounds like you might as well just call it Corpse Fart. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Operation Corpse Fart. <laughs> Cemetery Wind. Uh, and then there's, of course... Probably our favorite villain in the movie, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Nerd Squad. Yeah, the Nerd Squad. Uh, these guys have a big opening scene. Well, we'll just show it to you guys. We're a bunch of dorks. <laughs> <laughs> our government was really ruined when they all saw The Matrix and Mr. they were all Neo and shit. <laughs> Mr. Cade, we're the nerds. We're here to fucking deal with you. They pop out of the car looking like the biggest fucking dorks from the 90s you've ever seen. Like, just trench-coated weirdos. They look like the trench-coat mafia <laughs> all grown up. Yeah. Uh, and the guy, the lead guy is wearing the faggiest fucking glasses oh. you've ever seen. <laughs> you know, Mr. Yeager, we received a call from someone concerned about this. Did you receive a call from the drag queen that you stole your sunglasses from? Why are they all sparkly and shit? I guess Cemetery Wind really does fit them. <laughs> <laughs> they come on you like a corpse fart. <laughs> <laughs> they have trouble. They stink and they're just dead. Yeah, they have trouble 
uh, pinning down surf guy who's the most inept, like, milk toast weakling that you've ever seen. <laughs> this, the leader of this shit, on top of wearing faggot sunglasses, also has no, his men don't respect him, and guess how the fuck he dies. Guess. Guess how the fuck he dies. He's hit in the face with a fucking football. Uh, wow, great way to send out the mercenary badass of the film. Uh, yeah, this was the guy that was kind of being built up in the film as this is, you know, Megatron is, is uh, you know... Um, He's dead at this point. Megatron is as Optimus Prime's enemy, though. Right. Yeah, you know, that's his equal, but the equal of Mark Wahlberg in this movie is this fucking corpse fart guy who's a, who's a tough guy like him, and they're going to fight at some point. And they do fight... And it sucks. Yeah. And it wraps up with... Bonk. Oh, oh, death. That's your fucking villains. Hey, TJ. Yeah. Where's your warrant? <laughs> search the property. What do you mean search the property? You don't have a warrant. My face is my warrant. What does that mean? What a line. <laughs> my face is my warrant? <laughs> That's got to be a fucking bearded lesbian song. <laughs> my face is my warrant. I don't need no warrant. My face is my warrant. <laughs> my face is my warrant, TJ. My face <laughs> is my warrant. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and search it then. My face is my warrant. <laughs> my elbow is my insurance policy. <laughs> my pinky is my mortgage. <laughs> what? <laughs> So, those are all the human characters in the movie that even, honestly, the fans of these films don't really give a shit about. They're more interested in the Transformers more than meets the eye. And is there more than meets the eye, Paul? Uh, there is not. Where did he come from? He, from he, that hill. He came off that cliff. Whatever, Paul. You should be happy that you're in this movie. <laughs> I'm on this movie side now. Somebody fire a uh, missile at the fat one now. If you can't beat him, join him. Fuck yeah, Transformers 4, best. Samurai Transformers, that's cool. Where was he hiding? In the they're, fucking hills, bitch. He's in the mountains. He's the just desert. chilling in the Grand Canyon. He's a fucking helicopter. He's a fucking goddamn helicopter, and you you wish you were a helicopter. That's a cool You know what, truck, dude? Man. Considering that every fucking robot on the planet is being fucking hunted, you'd think they'd fucking be a little less conspicuous. Wouldn't it have been better if he just remained a beat up truck? Yes. Rather than a giant fucking obviously custom fucking six wheeler with flames on it? No. But this was cool. Style over substance, Paul. Style over substance. Oh, it's Bumblebee. He's here. Everybody's favorite from the franchise, TJ Bumblebee. Where's Shia LaBeouf? Who cares? I want Shia LaBeouf Humans back. Humans are not supposed to play by their rules. Fuck well, that shit. The rules have just changed. Wow, yeah! The but rules have just the fucking people. changed, Paul! The rules, bitch! They just changed, Paul. <laughs> um, I guess we should start with everybody's inexplicable favorite, Optimus Prime, who uh, in this movie is... He's Optimus Prime. So wait, Optimus Prime all of a sudden can just repair himself? I thought he needed Mark Wahlberg to repair him. Well, he, like, scanned another <coughs> truck. Yeah, he so scanned now. another truck so he could remake himself as a truck. Whatever. He's already a truck. He was a shittier truck, though. But now he's a cool truck. This truck fucking sucks. He's got such a great voice, though. He's got a cool voice, and he, uh... That makes up for a total lack of character development, doesn't it? Cool yeah. voice. If you, give a, if you give a shitty character a cool voice, it's a good character. Isn't that how that works? Uh, I guess so. According to Michael Bay writing, it is, I guess. In, in these movies, he seems to have become kind of like the Autobot dad. You know, the Autobots get up to some friskiness, and he's like, all right, Autobots, calm down. It's time to roll. That's basically what you get out of Optimus in this Optimus movie. knows best. Oh, uh, uh, oh, Optimus, dang it, you're always right. 
There was even that weird line where it kind of implied that Bumblebee is Optimus Prime's daughter. <laughs> oh, yeah. That shit. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's no smooching in front of me, okay? You don't swear. Who even says smooching? You're so square. Most girls fuck in front of their dads. I went through that with Bumblebee. What? What? I guess we might as well just get into Bumblebee right now since we already brought him up. He's Bumblebee. Yeah, more of the same Bumblebee. If you like Bumblebee from the first three movies, you get more of that. He's he's a yellow guy and he speaks with clips from other things. Yeah. And if you if if, if that fucking does it for you, if that's what gets you off, then congratulations. Here it is again. This is your film. Uh, Gunface. Yeah, this is the the I guess main he's a guy against Optimus Prime. Bounty hunter. Yeah. From Cybertron. Is, I don't know if he's from Cybertron or if he's just created by the same people that created Cybertron. No, he's Cybertron from Cybertron. Or whatever. I don't know. He He's a Transformer, too. I guess he's not an Autobot or a Decepticon. He's just a rogue bounty hunter that's working on the behalf of the creators who created the Transformers long ago and far away and who gives a shit. Um... He's, uh, he's, he's a villain, you know? He's a villain. He's a bad guy. Yeah, he's a very stereotypical bounty hunter. <laughs> Anything for cash. And uh, I... let me show you why he's the most emo character in history. Meanwhile, in wherever the fuck this is... I the Arctic. I passenger of Earth. An alliance is a contract. And contracts, like humans, expire. On this planet, we have a saying. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. I also have a saying. Fuck I you. Don't care. Oh, oh shit! Oh, oh emo bot just pwned your ass, Frasier! Your men allowed him to escape. You promised me human intelligence. Or is this? <laughs> There's no human intelligence to be found in this film. Know. Sorry to disappoint. What? Yeah, that's a line in this movie. We have a saying too. I don't care. Oh, fucking roasted. Slit my fucking wrist. Roasted. Life is meaningless. Great writing on that one. Oh my god. Uh, I also have a saying. I don't care. Uh, Galvatron is in this Kinda. weirdly. Um, he's a like a prototype made by KSI, which is the Evil Jews Corporation. I guess kind of based on Megatron, and somehow when they used Megatron's head, his soul or whatever infected Galvatron. So, so now Galvatron is Galvatron is Megatron, unbeknownst to anybody. And, and you would think the fact that he's playing the most iconic of Transformers villains would give him a huge role in this movie. Barely in it. Barely in it. There's one scene that features him prominently where he fights Optimus Prime on a highway, and then a. Uh, supposedly, he's in the final battle too. I guess I saw a glimpse of him here or there, but uh, he's barely in. This he's film. barely in the fucking battle. Blink and he's you'll miss him. I mean, just like a lot of things in this film. He Blink. Sucks. Uh, I mean, uh, it's almost like he was put there just so he could come back in the next film. Like, yeah. oh, this is how this is how fucking the Megatron got resurrected. So in the next film, when we use Megatron, everybody goes, oh, okay, yeah, that's right. He there he is. Alive. That's why there they did he it. Is. Okay. Um, Nigabot. Nigabot. Uh, and if you think that we're racist for calling him Nigabot, no. Michael Bay is racist <laughs> for creating him as Nigabot. He, okay? he is this shitty little robot that's uh, introduced about... Shitty doesn't even cover it, Paul. It, it's the worst CGI that I've seen in fucking decades. Okay, yeah, the design of this character is just like, it should have been scrapped and just destroyed. He uh, makes no sense. He's got these glowy dreadlocks. He's this little hobbity looking thing and his only fucking reason for being in the film is to catch people up i guess on what's going on in this ponderous fucking movie he's just like oh man no y'all got it all wrong you see ksi been working with cemetery wind they've been kidnapping them autobots that's what he does he's there a couple of times to catch everybody up inexplicably talks like a black dude from the bronx it makes no sense but he's in there so there's niggabot niggabot he wants to detonate that seed in the biggest city and kill millions. This is the worst piece of CGI that I've seen in the last 10 years. The worst concept for a fucking character and the worst piece of CGI. And annihilate your species. Obviously 
not there. Young greedy bastard just bought extinction to yourself. Not They're just problem, filming though. flowers and trains right now. Whole thing worked out good for me. Why? In the name of God. Would a fucking robot have a fucking attitude like a black dude from fucking the Bronx? Cause yeah, Michael wouldn't. Bay, dude. Man, you you all Autobots don't fuck yourselves, but whatever. I don't care. Say la vie, my nigga. <laughs> uh, the fat ballerina. Oh, uh, fat ballerina. Let's just show you why we call him that. Is a fat ballerina? Is that what he said? Yes. Hold on. <laughs> Wait. Nope. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. I want to... What? What? Your fortune cookie? Fortune cookie? Hold on, I want to hear this. Hold on. Pull the pin! I'm dying out here! Get that ticket! Pull the pin on what? Where'd they get a giant grenade? I don't know! Is this an Acme cartoon? Where did they get a giant grenade? Can I go back? Where did they get a giant grenade? Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> I think I did. I go back. I could have swore I went back. I guess I went. Yeah, you went forward. I think. <laughs> I'm so drunk. What happened? I don't know. I want to hear this ballerina line. Come and get some. Right. Whatever. I don't think we're gonna hear it again. I don't know, man. Whatever. What, what happened? What the fuck? I don't know, Paul. I thought I knew what was going on, but I don't know what's going on. You threw my hat. I'm sorry. <laughs> it seemed like a thing to do at the time that I did. Oh, wait, wait. Is it here? Oh, is it about, this is a ballerina. A fat ballerina? Did you just say, I'm a fat ballerina? Is that all he said? Is that what he said? Yeah, that's what I heard. I that can't him. be what he said, though, right? <laughs> At least you can understand that. I, I, but I mean, I fat ballerina. I, that can't be what he said. He said, I'm a fat ballerina. Why did he say I'm a fat ballerina? <laughs> I don't know. That's not what he said. He's Rewind it again if you want to. He said, I'm right, a fat no, I Because I, that's not what he said, dude. There's no fucking... All right. We're all gonna be quiet this time. I think it's before this. All right, here we go. Right, I'm good. just gonna shut up. Here we go. I know it's a, it's shortly after this. Who <laughs> knows why this is happening? I don't know. Just... I'm like a fat ballerina. Take scalps and slit throats. What? I'm like a fat ballerina who takes scalps and slits throats? I think. Got your fortune cookie? Now, yeah. Got your fortune cookie now. What? I'm dying out here. Hold on. TJ. Okay. No, TJ. listen, what? I'm like a I'm fat, like a fat ballerina. ballerina. I want to diagram that fucking sentence. What? Plus, so hold on. Which no, hold on. TJ, we gotta watch it one more time because I'm telling you, there's another problem with this. Not only does he say I'm like a fat ballerina, but what he leads into that with, and what he exits that with, is gibberish. Yeah, you can't. It's like I'm a fat ballerina. Shaka go bobo do! I shit you not. We gotta watch it one more time. Tell me you understand a fucking thing he says. I want to see this script. I want to see what they're fucking saying. All right, all right, all right. All right, here's the thing. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna turn it up a little. Turn it all the way up. Yeah. I 
Okay. You're absolutely right, it's gibberish. Got your fortune cookie? I don't know what the was joke he, there was. Because they're in China? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sad. Yeah. Yeah, this is a real powerful moment, Michael. Terrible. Good good scoring on that one. Uh, yeah. Out of yeah. Yep. Yep. First That's true thing has been fucking said. Thanks, John, for fucking summing up this film for us. Out of ideas. That is the voice, by the way, of John Goodman. Show us your kill him once and for all. Just give me the word. I'll splatter him. Is that John Goodman doing that voice? I hope not. Please tell me no. It is. You're indemnified. Oh my god! Goodbye. It's actually John No! <laughs> it's John Goodman. No! Why? Why? <laughs> John, no! <laughs> fucking they John. could have taken anybody to do that voice! Anyone. It was John fucking Goodman. Why? Why? Why'd you do this, John? Why did you do this, John? No! <laughs> no! Why? They cowed you into playing the fat fucking Autobot? Why, John? What? That's why you think it looks like Paul is because Paul and John Goodman look like. <laughs> John is a good actor! He doesn't belong in this! He's a great actor. I love him. <coughs> Anthony Hopkins is in the next one. What? Yeah, he's in the new one. Oh, that's right! <laughs> why would John Goodman take this role? Uh, it sounds like, too, that they paid him in Danishes, because I'll be goddamned if his mouth isn't full of marbles or some shit while he's recording these lines. I would say a good 50% of his dialogue is just undiscernible hey. gibberish. Get over here! Get over down the square! I'm gonna go to the bay! I got the boga! <laughs> like, you'll get shit like that! Like, what? Turn on the fucking subtitles, please! <laughs> Stand up the ground, you, right? I'm done. What? Okay, John. <laughs> what are you eating? Eat 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 John's like, I'm going to go What was that? John, can we do that line again? You're eating a Danish. No. <laughs> <laughs> you Fuck you, get my check takes. You can hear him eating a fucking donut as he's reading it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Goodman's eating, stuffing his fat fucking face as he's reading his dialogue. God love him. Thank goodness he is. That makes me respect him again. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, all right, thanks, John. Thanks, John. You're off the hook. <laughs> you're just sitting there eating a fucking donut as you're recording it. <laughs> what was that? Shababa. <laughs> They didn't know when they were watching and editing this that that was incoherent. <laughs> they didn't care, Paul. They just didn't oh, care. John Goodman's got this clear, <laughs> booming, easy to fucking understand way of speaking. He's just a very pronounced voice. And somehow they just bury it under explosions and Danish, I guess. And it's, some sort of filter of some kind. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's almost like they put a shitty echo filter over his voice and you could barely understand what the fuck he was saying half the time. It sounded muffled and weird and poorly mixed. Yeah, all of the other robot effects that they put over voices in these movies serves to make them stand out over the fucking background noise, but John Goodman's just blends right in. It's just... Oh, yeah. Uh, he's, he's, uh, just a, he's just a fat fuck. He's That's, a fat guy. Like, what is... How do you have a fat transformer? Is he eating too much oil? Or what are they... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, what did he do? How do you let yourself go as a transformer? <laughs> what happens to the thing you transform into is you get fatter. Like, if you're turning into, like, a sleek sports car and then you go through a bad divorce and put on 80 pounds, like, do you turn into a fucking BMW like, or a, a VW minibus like a or some utility shit? utility truck. Yeah. <laughs> You turn into a dump truck. Yeah, I don't know. I don't get. I don't. I don't know how a transformer gets fat. Whatever. It's. I guess that's a pretty minor. The, the, there's nothing to the character. He's just fat. I mean, he's, he's just fat and he's violent and he spews some of the most nonsensical gibberish lines you've ever heard about 
being a fat ballerina and fortune cookies. I got and... your fortune cookie here! It's like, what? What is that? How's a knife a fortune cookie? <laughs> I don't know. I swear to God, I'm gonna throw up from this camera. You pick John Goodman out of that horrible fucking. I just. I could tell it was John Goodman. I don't know. And why were you right? I don't know. <laughs> I could tell it was him, dude. I know John Goodman. I do too! Maybe your mind just didn't want to accept that that was John Goodman's voice. John Goodman was in a sound booth somewhere recording live. TJ, I don't this. think I can make it. I don't think I'm honestly thinking this is the one that I just can't. Uh, uh, but luckily, there's a samurai. Yeah. Samurai From guy. Bamboo has held command. This pipe is complete and total lack of energy. Where's the samurai come from? <laughs> Japan? Cybertron Japan? Cybertron has a Japan! I guess it does! Everywhere has a Japan. What's the matter with them? They suck. That's what's the matter with them. And he's just chock full of that fortune cookie wisdom. Through. Maybe that was why they did the fortune cookie. He's the one who should have said the fortune cookie thing, because, I mean, <laughs> all of his dialogue sounds like it came from yeah. a fortune cookie. Transformer who go to bed with itchy tailpipe wake up with stinky finger. <laughs> It's that level of just, I'm Asian, I'm wise. By um, the way, Ken Watanabe. Oh, fuck me. Why do they bury John Goodman and then leave Japanese samurai bot completely vocally clean? I want, that's what I'm, I'm trying to figure out who that is. The Japanese one? Yeah, I was wondering if it was Ken Watanabe or not. No, no, TJ, no it isn't. I don't know, it kind of sounds like It is like not it Ken be. Watanabe. I don't see him in the cast. No! I don't see him, all right? Thank you. What, what? is the samurai? What? I need to figure out the character's name. Pling Plong, Ching Wong. <laughs> samurai Transformers <laughs> for... Kill me now. You know what, dude? If we had 10 this minutes to go, Chelsea, I'd be okay. If we were like on the yeah. bleeding edge of this and we were leading into the fucking finale of this, I'd be like, okay, I got drunk and it sucked, but we were. Yeah, but. We just nice. crossed the fucking halfway point. I'm so done with this fucking movie. I don't care. It is Ken Watanabe! No! Look at that! Look at that right there! No! I called it again! Yes! I know them fucking voices, <laughs> bitch! That was Ken fucking Watanabe, dude! What is wrong with these people? John fucking Goodman and Ken fucking Watanabe in this fucking piece of horse shit! No! This is the worst movie of both of their careers simultaneously! <laughs> This movie is so bad, it's the worst movie of fucking Mark Wahlberg's career, and he was in The Happening! <laughs> what? No! TJ, they had John Goodman and fucking Ken Watanabe! And these are the main characters. And they wasted them on this! You know, uh, so John Goodman, Ken Watanabe, and Kelsey Grammer all award-winning actors, all talented, all have appeared in, in good stuff. Totally wasted in this piece of shit. Kelsey Grammer is a monosyllabic grunter. John Goodman is speaking incoherent gibberish. And Ken Watanabe is talking in fucking fortune cookies. And, and delivering horrible jokes, too. They give Ken Watanabe some of the worst groaners in the movie. <laughs> I was expecting a giant call. Uh, so those are your Transformers. I mean, there's probably some other ones in the background here and there. Yes, I've been waiting for them all to dispatch each other so I could take charge with no trouble at all. Uh, but whatever, those are the major ones. Those are your heroes, those are your villains. That's the fucking miserable cast of characters you've been saddled with 
for this slogging, unwatchable, two hour and 45 minute festival of bullshit. And oh my God, you will feel every minute of that runtime like it is a fucking eon. We're just getting started. The Transformers, more than meets the eye. Okay. So, uh, we can't talk about this movie without talking about the Michael Bay effect. Oh man, he put his shitty fingerprints all over this movie. An 18-wheeler spins out of control, and it's all like, brush, in this huge tanker full of diamonds. Craw, craw. Those aren't ideas, those are special effects. I don't understand the difference. <laughs> uh, you ever been in a bathroom where someone smeared shit on the walls? Yep. That's Michael Bay. Yep. This is the cinematic equivalent of someone who smeared their shit everywhere. Michael, and it made me violent, Paul. Yeah, yeah. It really did bring out the darkest, uh, the, the worst angels of our nature, I oh, guess. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mark Wahlberg should be injected with Ebola for making this fucking movie. He just cashed a check, man. It's Michael Bay you want to you want to kill. He's the one that keeps doing this shit. I know what I really want to do. Look, I'm gonna shoot, let me listen. Hear me out. Hear me out, Paul. We gotta fill the theaters of the next trans. We gotta fucking new transforming every fucking theater on opening night. Fill it with poisonous gas. Yeah. Be a national tragedy, but at least it would kill the series. No, it wouldn't be a national tragedy because you know who's really at fault for this shit is these motherfuckers who keep seeing these yeah. fucking movies. I guarantee you the collective IQ, a collective IQ of America go up 20 points, dude. 20 fucking points. I don't think you can take the IQ of America up now. I think it's all down now. I don't no, think no, no. it's up. We gotta kill it. We kill the Transformers fans. Bring the collective of IQ of America up 10 points, up to 11, dude. I don't think so. Oh, good. I'm glad she is I'm okay. so glad that these characters are all right. Bumblebee! More people need to die. The Bumblebee! Like, part of the main cast. Uh, every... No, I think it's the people who made this movie. I'm proud of you. Dude. No, I'm saying I'm I, the listen, to I'm sorry to be this way. Isis... You need to, if Michael Bay tries to make another one of these movies. Hello, Akbar! Yeah, like, Hello, Akbar! If you want to attack the decadence of the West. No, 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 I'm going to go farther than you, TJ. I'm converting it. to Islam right now. I'm officially in ISIS. You know what? They're right. The fucking West is wrong. Everything it turns out is shit. These people need to die. Everyone involved in it. I don't care if you just did the catering. You need to die. You need to die, caterer. Dude, I don't care if you somebody... gave a fucking a watercrest sandwich to Mark Wahlberg on the set of this piece of shit. You deserve to die. Done. I don't care if you delivered a Chipotle burrito on a bike to the key grip of this film. You're done. In fact, we deserve to die for paying three ninety nine dollars rent. You know what, dude? I'll go farther. If you're a fucking cop that cut a parking ticket to the dude that brought the Chipotle burrito, you're done! I thought he took a bike. You should have been known. <laughs> you should have been known. I don't even know what that means, but you should have. <laughs> You should have been known. What does that mean? Uh, it makes more sense in this fucking movie. Who gives a fuck? Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. Um, so there's that. I mean, maybe, maybe what drives you insane is the fact that Michael Bay just, he doesn't know what a still shot is. Oh yeah, we should shoot this Michael Bay style. Yeah, let's do Go it. Go ahead. All right, uh, so guys, this movie is dog shit. And let me tell you why. This is, this is basically what you get uh, from Michael Bay. Uh, if there are more than a couple of stable shots in this film, I missed them. 
<laughs> um, I didn't see one. Everything I is, didn't see one. Everything is shot like a, like a dwarf with Parkinson's is holding like an old style handheld fucking Sony cam. Even when it's just dialogue scenes, like the typical back and forth, even then it's the camera is shaky. The camera if, if it's shaky. not shaking, it's panning. Sometimes yeah. it's doing both. It's panning, it's shaking, it's doing that shitty Michael Bay 360 shot. That you never a get a times. break from it. I, I found it myself. It never get, stops moving. I got sick. I, I, I there was something. Now maybe it was the the copious amounts of booze I was pouring down my gullet. But I'd like to think that it was just because I didn't get a single moment of tranquility in this entire movie. It's almost like he just wants the adrenaline to be at 110 percent. Even when he's shooting like a quiet conversation between father and daughter about whether or not they're going to the dance together. It's strange. Yeah. Michael Bay really does not believe in a stable shot. Everything's got to be moving at all times. Yep. I'm starting to get kind of ill watching it. Tell the president this is not an attack. Michael Bay, just stop the camera, please! Hold a stiff shot on somebody one time. No. no. Not allowed. He refuses to do that. Flubity, flubity, flu! Flubity, flubity, flu! It's like having a fairy film your, your film. Like an actual mythical fairy is holding your thing, just flapping its wings around your film. Flubity, 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 flu! I'm starting to get sick from watching it. <laughs> the product placement in this movie, everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, that's standard at this point, but oh my God, is it shoved in your face. I already mentioned the fact that I stopped drinking Red Bull solely because there was a product placement for Red Bull in this movie. I was like, nope, never using that product again. Yep. I was drinking almost a Red Bull a day, and I'm down to none. Don't want it. I'll drink uh, Monster. I'll drink fucking uh, the Starbucks double shots, whatever. I'll drink paint thinner before I drink another fucking Red Bull. After Fuck this you. horse shit. Uh, luckily, some of the other products I really don't have to worry about. I'm not, I'm not exactly cracking open a dozen Bud Lights a day. Oh, Bud uh, although this, this movie's cracking open about a dozen Bud Lights a minute. At least five or six instances of Budweiser product placement in this movie. You suck at robots, Dad. Okay, how much did Budweiser fucking pay for all these? Pl I've seen like three cans of fucking Budweiser in this movie so far. Uh, you're, you're, you're probably gonna see a lot more. I guarantee, at some point, is an Autobot gonna get thrown through a Budweiser billboard? Dude, I hope an Autobot grabs a Budweiser truck at one point and takes a cool drink in the middle of battle. Sha, <laughs> 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 yes, Budweiser. <laughs> That seems like a terrible idea. Yeah, they're they're just bad. I knew it! I fucking knew it! <laughs> I knew it! It was gonna happen! I fucking knew it! I said a billboard, but that was close. <laughs> that was a Bud Light truck. All kinds of commercials. Oh. Look at them all. Look, Look at all that Bud, Bud Light, Light Bud Light, Light, what a travesty! <laughs> He's gonna. You better have insurance. What? A freaking spaceship. You go get insurance on a freaking spaceship. Good luck with that, buddy. Is your car? Oh. I knew he was gonna drink Guys. one, dude. I fucking knew he was gonna drink one, dude. Good gear. I mean, it's it couldn't be more fucking brazen. Get your Hanes on, lace up your Nikes, grab your Wheaties and your Gatorade, and we'll pick up a Big Mac on the way to the ballpark. Just ter terrible. Fucking terrible. Uh, the Budweiser thing, just recurrent. You just see Budweiser logos all over the film. They might as well have just had one on fucking Optimus Prime's chest. There might as well be a big brought to you by yeah. Budweiser fucking logo on Optimus Prime. Why not just make Optimus it would have Prime? Been like make Bud, op yeah, make Budweiser Optimus Prime. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Yeah, make him just a Budweiser <laughs> truck. Yeah. Like, why are they putting flames on him anymore? Just put a big Budweiser logo on him, man. Somebody's got to pull the Budweiser around. Uh, just ridiculous amount of scenes, by the way, where people walk away from injuries that should have left them seriously <laughs> debilitated or dead, and they're just fine. It's over. That was me. Hey!
here's the most damning example that totally made us freak out and lose our fucking minds. What? The black wall practice? Who oh, died? Pause the shit! Did Mark Wahlberg just block a 25-ton robot with his thing? Does the gun make him Superman? Kick a giant robot with an arm the size of a flathead V8 engine. Just went, kick And he went, kick. <laughs> yes, that happened. Whatever. I saw it happen. Whatever! Michael Bay physics, dude. Physics. Michael Bay physics. It's its own class in college. Okay. How does that make any sense? There would be so much power behind that fucking blow. It yeah. doesn't matter if you put up another object to block it. You're just going to get no, you're dead. No, you, you just got to lock your elbows, TJ. And you, you, can block, you can block anything like that. Even, yeah. Yeah, no. It Mark would be Wahlberg like, would have been turned into a fucking pink mist. It would have been the fucking equivalent of him just, like, at one point in the movie, Mark Wahlberg just lifts a pickup truck over his head and throws it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's that level of shitty physics. Like, no, a human being could not do that, movie. Yeah, what if he just, like, falls out of a plane and lands and keeps running? You know what I mean? Like, if it's been positive that he's a superhuman before this, or that the gun makes him a superhuman, okay, whatever. But, no, we're just supposed to believe that Mark Wahlberg can block a 20-ton fucking hammer. Tink! Tinky winky. Tinky winky. Tinky winky. Doesn't make fucking sense. Um, so the physics in the movie are dog shit. Uh, the product placement is out of fucking control. And uh, the, the whole movie is just a jarring fucking series of... Constant movement, constant shaking, constant just look. You feel sick. You feel fucking seasick watching this piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted a break. Um, the Michael Bay effect, in fact, made us take breaks, I think. That's true. Uh, we took Every movie we've ever watched before this. Yep. Do we ever take a break during Suicide Squad? One Hell? sitting. Nope, one sitting. Do we ever take a break during Pokemon, the first movie? Nope, one sitting. One sitting. This movie, we had to get up after 30 minutes and be like, okay, fuck this. Let's We're go take go, a break. Go, I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. We're going to go use the bathroom. We're going to come back. And I thought maybe that'd be our only break. But I think we ended up taking three breaks. Yep. Three nice, long breaks to just catch our fucking breath, catch our fucking thoughts, because Michael Bay is relentless. TJ, this is the worst thing we've watched. Easily. It's so fucking Dude, I would rather sit in front of a fucking screen and watch Pokemon the first movie a million times. <laughs> watch this again. A million times, huh? A million. I think you might feel differently if you yeah, actually had to watch that movie a million times. I don't know. You'd probably go crazy. I'm gonna go crazy with this. <laughs> and that's this thing is like this fucking runtime. It's like it's of like this fucking movie. It's like close to three hours. It's two hours and forty five minutes. There's no fucking reason for it. There is no fuck. It doesn't have a big epic grand story to tell. It's just a bunch of convoluted nonsense that is stretched painfully, agonizingly into a two hour and forty five minute fucking runtime that just breaks your fucking spirit. I can't imagine. I mean, look at us after. 30 minutes of this shit. So when I was upstairs, I did a calculation. I realized we are one-sixth. One-sixth of the way through this movie. <sighs> I'm not gonna make it, guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna fucking make it. Oh, oh God. One fucking sixth? Oh, God. One sixth. It should be half over by now. It's already, what the fuck is this? I don't know. The booze isn't helping. Oh, my God, Chelsea. One sixth, Chelsea. We can do it together. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if I cannot smoke. Oh, once. You could smoke. 
Me and Paul are drinking. You could you could smoke. I'm drinking too. You could smoke, baby. I'm. If I smoke, I'm gonna be passed. Give. Yeah, this. I don't. I change my mind. <laughs> I need to be. Cro I need more drugs for this than I, I know, thought. That's what I'm saying. This is not. <laughs> I changed. I said I was just gonna drink, but I want to smoke too. Fuck that. I can't do it. <sighs> yeah, baby. Go ahead. Look at us after every fucking time, I mean, every time that we pull up the fucking clock to see how much is left, it's just, you want to just kill yourself. Yeah. Because you can't believe it. You f there's a point where you just feel like, man, this movie's got to be wrapping up, and there's 45 minutes left, or there's 30 minutes left, and you're just like, holy shit! At one point, we looked at it and figured out that there were two fucking full hours of the film left. I was already doing this. All right, Michael Bay, let's bring this one home. Two hours left! Please, Captain Morgans, take the pain away. 43 minutes. Shut up. There's still two Wait, hours yeah, left! There's two hours and two minutes left, Paul! No! <laughs> <laughs> you are Mr. Toad's wild fucking ride now, bitch! Why? This is the most. Why? <laughs> oh, why did we do this? <laughs> We're only two hours. Two hours left. Two fucking hours, Paul. <laughs> That's longer than the entire run of Pokemon, the first fucking movie. We're not even. We're not even started yet. We barely fucking begun. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> TJ, how much, how far do we have? Are we over halfway yet? One hour and a half. Yeah. And we're just about halfway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. What more can they yeah. do? They need to wrap this up. <laughs> They're not even close to wrapping it up. I've enjoyed Dunt. We're about halfway through. We're a little over halfway through. The deal is done. Is it? Yeah, I guess we've got, we've literally paused this every half hour. You know what? We dude, have to digest this piece of shit. It's totally fucking I necessary. Have no idea Look, what's listen, happening. man. I'll tell you what. I've literally not looked at the screen in like five minutes. <laughs> I haven't even looked at the fucking movie in five I minutes. I've been looking at it. I just don't know. What's I have been you scared to look. Shit! You haven't missed shit. It's just like metal clashing and pe dirty people running around. Like, that's it. <laughs> let's go upstairs for a minute. All right, yep. Let's get Bye, everybody. We, we've we've literally watched every other movie we've ever had to watch all the way through. This one we've we've literally taken a break every thirty minutes for this one. Cause goddamn, god fucking damn, John Goodman, Ken Watanabe. You should be fucking ashamed. You you need to send me your fucking pay paychecks for this fucking movie because this is ins you can't I can, you can't do this to me. You can't fucking do this to me. No, no. <laughs> I'm not gonna survive this, DJ. I'm not gonna make it. No! There's a half hour left. There's a half hour left! There's a half hour left! What the fuck else could they fucking do? There's a half hour left! Where else could they go with that? Oh god, no! I feel like I'm gonna cry. There's a half hour left! The Transformers, more than meets the eye. Incoherent. 
fucking drivel. This, Incoherent. This movie is impossible to follow. And we tested this fucking theory. Uh, you know, we thought maybe, okay, maybe it was the alcohol. Yeah, maybe we just couldn't follow it. We were too drunk. we're too drunk. Too fucked up. Smoked too much weed. Drank too much shit. Couldn't follow it. We had to watch this thing twice, though. See, we get to watch it once. And then we get to sit down and watch us watch it. To edit out all the little clips you guys have seen. It still makes no sense. This movie, from start to finish, is completely nonsensical. Here's an example. Mark Wahlberg, right? What? No! Finds this truck. He thinks it's a junker he can fix up. He uh, uh, very quickly figures out it's Optimus Prime. Mark Wahlberg goes from a dude that fixes shitty robots and fucking CD players for a living to a dude that just has a fucking dying, undying devotion to the fucking Autobots like that. As soon as he finds out it's an Autobot, he's immediately committed to fixing it. Sight unseen, no questions asked, I'm with you guys. And he's immediately swept up into this giant perilous journey. He, he's not even around Optimus long enough to make a genuine connection with him. Yeah, I mean, like, whatever you want to say about the fucking first few Transformers movies, at least they had the fucking storytelling insight to give... Uh, Sam Witwicky, fucking Shia LaBeouf's character, at least they had the brains to give him some sort of emotional connection to Bumblebee. Right. There was like, it almost was like his dog or his pet, you know, like, oh, you know, but my Bumblebee, you know, and they, they had time together and Bumblebee protected him from threats and all this other stuff. In this movie, there's no fucking, there's not a trace of that. It's just like, Mark Wahlberg finds Optimus Prime. He's loyal to Optimus Prime to death. Yep, just immediately... I'm willing to put my family in danger. I'm willing to put myself in danger. I'll do anything for fucking Optimus Prime. Why? Kid, why are you willing to help me? I guess maybe because you trust me too. What? Dumb. When you look at the motivations of characters in this movie, they don't make sense. When you look at the plot points of this movie, they don't make sense. There's so many things that if you blink, if you sneeze, if you lapse your attention for a moment, you've missed some important key <laughs> plot point. And I know that they were aware of this problem with the film because that's why there's so many characters that exist solely to deliver big bombs of uh, expository diarrhea to catch everyone up on what's going on. You remember that one with the bald Jew? Yep. Where just inexplicably in the elevator he regurgitates the plot up to that point? I know this is really happening. A man, me, who's worth over $20 billion is now being chased by CIA assassins. That's the truth. And in the middle of a robot uprising... Carrying what is in essence a tactical nuke. <laughs> the great thing is, hi. The great thing is that I'm I'm barely feeling any jet lag. I, yeah. What a weird thing to do, but you have to with this film. Otherwise, nobody's gonna. Well, nobody knows what's going on anyway. The funny thing about it is, by the time you get to these patches of expository dialogue, you're already too lost to be caught up. I'm barely feeling any jet lag. Another thing that really bothered me about this movie. Um, the Transformers are so nerfed in this movie. Um, remember in the first Transformers movie where our weapons were useless against them? Yeah. Well, you nothing... could fucking shoot them. You could try to blow them up. You could shoot missiles at them. Nothing worked. That's kind of the point. Is they're that just these big, fucking tough, impervious aliens that we can't use conventional weapons against. Well, that's over. Because in this movie... They're made of fucking paper mache. Just there are people. I see. There. I think there are times in this movie where people f are firing handguns at Autobots. Shouldn't they know at this point that Autobots aren't going to be phased by a handgun? In the first Transformers movie, weren't these things like just totally immune to conventional weapons, and now all of a sudden they're running like bitches from humans? Yeah, people are like fucking firing machine guns at them. No. Now a little rocket launcher can take out the leg. Uh, uh, 
Another thing that bothers me about this movie, and we kind of got into it a little bit with the John Goodman stuff, but it's just everyone in this movie seems to be a fucking mush mouth. Yeah, there's a there's so many lines of dialogue that left us going, what? Huh? Huh? What did they say? What was that, Sonny? No. What? Punch out I agree. What is he saying? Bunch up Slimer Pete! The bunch up the server. Nah, you guys. Oh, I'm good. Give me a Coke. Coke. Oh, here's slow mo. Coke. Thank you, Paul Zigo. Yeah. Bunched up Slimer Pete. <laughs> Bunched up Slimer Pete. Bunched up Slimer Pete. What? What are you fucking what? Like maybe one, of, maybe you guys will say like it's obvious what he's saying. It's say he's saying blah, blah, blah. But as far as I can tell, it's bunched up Slimer Pete. Yeah, let us know what he was saying. Let us know. I can't figure it if out. If you got sharper ears than us old fogies, let us know <laughs> what the fuck that robot was saying because we have no fucking clue. Uh, uh, but it was just constant throughout the movie. That's Optimus Prime. <laughs> No God! Hey DJ! What the Hey DJ! Hey DJ! That's Bartimus Prime! In one lobby! Can you say? Can you say? Can you do us a favor? Can you say that document five for me? Can one lobby? Hey, John Goodman! Didn't you win an Oscar? John Goodman, can you say? Hey, guys, what was your mama? Here's your mama for me. What was that for you? John! Oh. Hey, John Goodman! Sure, bring that Danish from the green room in. It's okay, we don't care! Eat it while you're recording! I give up! I We touched on this one a little earlier, but let's get into it a, a little more in depth now. Yeah. One so, of the fucking cool things about Transformers, right? Is, and remember, these started off as toys. Right, and the cool thing about the toys was is that there were two things. They were a truck, and then they were a robot, and you could transform them logically from one thing to the next. And that's one of the things that made them cool as toys. I think it's one of the things that makes them cool as a movie concept. But inexplicably in this movie, they come up with a way to make that uncool. Now, a lot of the evil uh, Transformers no longer go eh, oh, 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 eh, eh. They just turn into a bunch of fucking squares and morph into whatever they want. So the Transformers don't even have to transform in cool ways now. They just no. Turn that was too cool. They DJ. could just turn into a bunch of fucking little. They just turn into dots. pixels now. Cool. I hated that actual clever you know what, transformation. Dude? Yeah, man. The fact that they actually had to make sense and sensibly transform from one thing into another. That's too hard to do. Let's just turn them into a bunch of amorphous 1980s fucking looking pixels. Who won? Well, here's me at 45 minutes into the movie. <laughs> oh my fucking god, I'm not gonna make it, you guys! We're on a fucking losing streak, yep. folks. <laughs> yep. TJ, I don't think this. I can make it. I don't think I'm honestly thinking this is the one that I just can't. Because I can't! I don't care about anything in this movie! I don't care who dies! Paul! Think of the money, Paul. Just think of the money. Oh, God, man. Just think of the money, dude. Money can't buy me love. DJ, money can't buy me love. I don't know then, Paul. You're just fucked. You're just fucked. Let's try to use violence as a last resort. What? Who's used violence as a last resort in this movie? He literally stabs things after he says it. Well, we love. Let's go. <laughs> I want. What's that one's name? 
Who cares? Who cares that Tron that is his fucking name? We can't beat one of these movies to save our fucking goddamn lives. I really thought this time that the alcohol was going to like dull the pain of this, but it it almost sharpened it in a way. <laughs> it just made it harder to follow what ultimately broke both of us, which is just the incomprehensibly convoluted plot of this stupid brain dead film. And just I mean like it it all kind of comes together, the super convoluted plot the blink and you'll miss it relationship between all these fucking characters and all these factions with all these interests, the just jumble of bullshit. Like every fucking action scene in this movie is just, ooh, blah, 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 blah. look at the colors, look at the sounds, ah, oh, look, it's so loud, it's so fucking colorful, it's so bright, look at all the motion, 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 oh my god, oh, boom, 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 boom. look at the explosion, oh, it's fucking, ooh, blah, blah, blah. ah, turn on run on it, ooh, look at the shitty line, oh, you fortune cookie, blah, <laughs> for two hours and 45 minutes, it just, the, the constant location changes, too. Now we're here. Yeah. Now we're here. Look at this. What's going on here? What's this character doing? What's this character doing? Oh, my God. Look. It's like a movie uh, directed and conceived of by a retarded ADHD kid on crack. <laughs> and it's fucking shot by a fucking... What was your analogy earlier? A fucking dwarf with fucking Parkinson's, Parkinson's syndrome. Yeah. It's it's just all just, shaky. Everything is just designed for maximum sensory overload all the time, always going, always moving, always fast, always hyperkinetic. Never is there a moment of fucking just like let's have a a, a fucking nice little dramatic scene to break it up. No, it's just Transformers, 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 Transformers. Yeah, just forty-five keep... minutes of that shit broke my ass. I would say this movie knocked me out in the second or third round. I lasted a little longer than TJ, but as you can see uh, in the clips here, I didn't do much better. Please, no! <laughs> it's John Good. No! Uh, I would say this movie not only beat us. It fucking took our asses to school. Yeah. We got taken behind the woodshed, and we got our fucking big, fat, neck beard asses beat. This is easily the worst movie we've watched. Oh, my God. Runs no away with it. No fucking contest. Suicide Squad is a fucking masterpiece. <laughs> yes. Compared to this ass. I feel bad at being so harsh with Suicide Squad. I feel it, bad it, for every one, every movie we've watched. Yeah. Uh, no, not, not, not Star Wars Holiday okay, Special. Okay, let's be honest. That okay, one's not yeah, worth feeling yeah. bad for. No, Star Wars Holiday Special is... Look, here's how it goes, though. On the shit scale, Transformers is, is damn near the top. Yeah. Damn near the top. Like a smidgen below that is a Star Wars Holiday Special. Yep. And then a little, maybe a little bit down here is Suicide Squad, Pokemon the first movie, probably around here. Uh, Ghostbusters, probably like here. Yep. Um, we also did a God's Not Dead review that was just for my patrons that probably would be more up here. Yeah, somewhere around the God's top Not of the Dead middle is, of the pack. is there. Maybe not quite as bad as Star Wars Holiday Special, but. Yeah, it's 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 a contender. It's no, a fucking none contender. of these, none of those movies none of came them, close to this. None one. of them could touch. None this. of them could even come close to touching this. <laughs> it sucks, Paul. I can't do it. So there's been no to make money. If you guys don't buy this review, I'm gonna fucking kill myself, please. How we said, did this for money. We did this for you, kind of, but you're, I mean, we did it for your money. <laughs> we did it for money. Please. It's not worth it. Oh, God, Paul. Oh, God. I'm like raining tongues. Why won't it stop? The thought of having to sit down and watch this movie again. Is it's I, I would rather have ice picks uh, driven through my balls. I'd rather have my fucking fingernails pulled out by the root, and then fucking salt and alcohol just poured on the fucking nail beds. I, this is 
This one was the worst of the worst. Uh, there's a new contender for top dog shit in TJ and Paul versus. And if we watch something worse than this, fucking God help us, dude. God fucking help us. I don't believe in God, but I'm going to be praying that there's not anything worse than this on our slate in the future. But knowing this shit, I'm sure there fucking is. So, Transformers 4 or Transformers Age of Extinction is now the, the top fucking contender. It's the one to beat. Uh, can any movie possibly beat it? And if so, can we possibly beat that movie? That's it. <laughs> Goodbye. We're broken men. I don't know what to tell you. Chelsea, I love you, baby. Please give me your hand. I need you in this moment of fucking... This is gonna be all right, baby. Oh my God, I don't know. It's gonna be all right, sweetheart. Stay strong, baby. It's okay. I don't. I don't want, don't to watch see anymore. Anymore. Don't watch anymore, baby. I don't no. Want to. no, baby, you shouldn't see this.